Aish, why is uh, Tasleem Rahmani saying today that don't link triple talaq, don't link polygamy, right? Don't link child marriage to the issue of Muslim personal law. He is saying this because he is ashamed of these three practices, no, do, but he wants to continue it. At all. No, no, no. He is ashamed of these three the practices in heart, but he wants debate. to continue it. Arnab Ghoswami, you are one of the biggest fear-mongering, lucky, ignorant individuals among all the news anchors in the media industry in India. You pretend to know everything. However, you know nothing but shouting. For your information, we Muslims are not ashamed of any of these practices that you indicated. We're not ashamed of triple talaq, we're not ashamed of polygamy, we're not ashamed of child marriage. The reason is that if you look at the census report, you will find out that the ratio of child marriage and polygamy is much higher in Hindu community than Muslim. According to the report, 15.25% tribals practice polygamy, 6.7% Jainis practice polygamy, 7.9% Buddhists practice polygamy, 5.8% Hindus practice polygamy, and 5.7% Muslims practice polygamy. And this report was released in 1961. And after that, there is no official data collected by the Indian government. And by the way, for your information, the tribals, according to Savarkar, your role model are Hindus. So if you calculate 15.25 and 5.8%, that's 21.5%. It means 21.5% Hindus are practicing polygamy. So if polygamy is bad, according to your narrative, then Hindus should be ashamed, not Muslims, because there are more Hindus practicing polygamy in India. And let's talk about the child marriage. You are calling Tasneem Rahmani that he should be ashamed of child marriage. By the way, those people who practice child marriage, they should be ashamed if it is a crime in India. 84% according to the census report, 84% Hindus practice child marriage only in 2015. Whereas 11% Muslims practice child marriage. You need to get your facts right. You need to understand that there are people watching your shows who have easy access to these uh, census reports. They can easily collect the data and make you look fool. And the Muslim Personal Law Board is not the spokesperson of 172 million Muslims in India. Be clear about that, sir. Is it? Is it in any way? Zina Chokat Ali, is, is it? So who are these self-proclaimed people who claim to represent all Muslims in India? You're setting the highest standard of hypocrisy. You're saying that who are these self-proclaimed people who are pretending to be the representative of 170 million Muslims? According to you, there are 83 point. 9 million Muslims women in India and you think that, that the Muslim personal law board does not represent them despite the fact that Muslim personal law board has a women body that includes women from all walks of life women from every state and the reason why I call it a greatest standard of hypocrisy because the woman attending your debate her name is Nahid Hassan you call her a representative of 83.9 million women look at this Mr. Rahmani, I'm surprised you don't know because one minute you don't speak of me now. Her name is Nai Shasan. She is no one second, one second, Mr. Rahmani, one minute, one minute. Her name is Nai Shasan. She is the co-founder of the Bharatiya Muslim Mahila Andolan, and I can tell you with confidence that she represents 83 million Muslim women more than you do. So a board with a woman body in it, and that body includes. Women from all walks of life and from every state does not represent, according to you, 83 million of women. Whereas a woman who was not known to even her hometown by attending a show at your TV channel suddenly becomes a representative of 83 million women. What a great logic. And that's why I say that you have set the highest standard of hypocrisy. You claim that you know everything. I know what is going on here. I know what is going on here. I know what is going on here. Mr. Goswami, you know nothing. I have given proof that you are one big lucky ignorant doing your show on national TV. How unlucky and unfortunate we are that we get to see your face every day for one hour in your news hour show. We hope that this turmoil of ours ends soon.
rights, the rights, may, 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 may I serve with utmost respect, yeah, the, the rights of inheritance, the copastery rights of a girl born in a Hindu family, her rights over the joint family assets, her rights of inheritance, her rights of maintenance, her rights of remarriage, her rights of adoption. Do you know the Hindu Adoption Maintenance Act says that even a single woman can adopt a child to this? No, no, These no, are the not, progressive not just that. laws which no, are no, not just. The lady on your show claims that the law of inheritance in Hindu act is more progressive than the law of inheritance in Sharia. Let me tell you this. <clears throat> the only picture you see is that if a father died and he left behind a son and a daughter and they don't get equal amount of money, they don't, equal amount, they don't get equal amount of wealth, it means that such law is biased towards women and it's a form of discrimination. The reason why you're saying this is because you have not been trained to look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that there is not only one scenario of inheritance, rather there are little more than 30 scenarios of inheritance if a person died. And I can tell you very clearly that out of these 30 scenarios, there are only four scenarios where a man gets little more than a woman. Whereas there are 10 situations where a woman gets exactly equal to what a man gets. And there are 16 situations where a woman gets more than what a man gets. So you're bashing Islam and you are criticizing the Islamic law of inheritance because when the father died and he leaves behind his wealth, so the son has the opportunity to, go, to get more than what, her, what his sisters get. Just because of that one scenario, you are demonizing and criticizing Islam and degrading the Sharia, Sharia law. I'm sorry, your ignorance cannot be a reason for us to compromise with our personal law. We understand our personal law much better than anyone else. With this level of ignorance, in fact, you lost the moral right to even organize a debate on your show. You should better be prepared next time when you talk about Islam. It is not for fear-mongering paid anchors. It is only for those who try to seek truth. Here I have told you to know one thing about the show. The show that I have shown you a clip of the woman, is that the law of Islam is the law of Islam. فرسودہ ہے جبکہ ہندو قانون وراثت کا بہت پروگریسو ہے میں ایسے لوگوں سے یہ کہنا چاہتا ہوں کہ وہ صرف ایک سینائیو کو یا ایک سیچویشن کو سامنے رکھ کر فیصلہ نہ کریں ان کے نزدیک صرف ایک سیچویشن ہے کہ اگر کوئی آدمی مرتا اور وہ اپنے پیچھے اپنے بیٹے اور بیٹی کو چھوڑتا ہے تو دولت کا نظام اس طریقے سے اسلام میں نہیں ہوتا کہ بیٹے اور بیٹی کو ففٹی ففٹی ملے بلکہ بیٹے کو زیادہ ملتا ہے اور بیٹی کو کم ملتا ہے حالانکہ انہیں سوچنا چاہیے کہ جس بیٹے کو زیادہ مل رہا ہے اس کے اوپر ریسپانسیبلٹیز بھی زیادہ ہیں بیٹی کو کوئی خرچ نہیں کرنا ہے ساری ریسپانسیبلٹی بیٹی کی بیٹے کے اوپر ہیں پلس اپنی فیملی کا خرچہ بھی بیٹے کے اوپر ہی ہے جبکہ اگر بیٹی کی شادی ہو جاتی ہے تو اس کا خرچہ اس کے ہزبنڈ کے اوپر آتا ہے دوسری بات کہ وراثت کی ٹوٹل تھرٹی سے زائد سیچویشنز اور سینریوز ہیں اگر آپ ان سینریوز کو ایک پڑھتے چلے جائیں تو اس میں آپ کو اندازہ ہوگا کہ چار سیچویشن ایسی ہیں جہاں پر مرد کو عورت سے زیادہ ملتا ہے جبکہ دس سیچویشن ایسی ہیں جس میں مرد اور عورت دونوں کو برابر ملتا ہے اور سولہ سولہ کیسز ایسے ہیں جس میں عورت کو مرد سے زیادہ ملتا ہے یہ ہے اسلام کا وراثت کا قانون اگر آپ پڑھے لکھے نہیں ہیں اور آپ شریعت کو نہیں سمجھتے ہیں اور آپ وراثت کے قانون کو نہیں جانتے ہیں تو آپ کو یہ حق حاصل نہیں ہے کہ آپ اسلام کی وراثت کے قانون پر کرٹیسائز کریں اور نیشنل ٹی وی پر آ کر آپ شریعت کو فرسودہ قرار دیں So you people have not done any work. You have one book, Majmua'e Qawaneen-e Islami, mm. and it's written by your own personal law board people, and they are using their own law, and they are forcing to implement on 1937 Sharia Application Act. The reason why people in the Muslim personal law board had to write this book, Majmua'e qawaneen -e Islami, so ignorant people like you can easily understand the Sharia because you have no direct access to the Quran and Sunnah. You don't understand Arabic language. If I give it to you a copy of the Quran, you will not be able to even translate the single ayah, Surah Al-Fatiha, a surah that a Muslim must recite in every namaz. So if you cannot understand the Quran, if you cannot understand the hadith of our beloved Prophet ﷺ directly from its original resources, then ulama will have to write books in local languages so that laymen, common people, can easily understand the Islamic concepts. I'm sure that this book is nothing but the Urdu version of the Sharia explained by the Prophet, peace be upon himself.